hello hello welcome to my channel if you're new here welcome back to my channel if you've been here jumping right into it i am doing my little pedicure routine i have not gotten a pedicure from someone else since literally 2020 <laughs> either 2020 or 2021 i believe i had a toenail problem so i was going to like a specialty pedicure place and the pedicures were low-key expensive um they worked really well but yeah it was expensive and then once i went to london um i just got in the habit of like doing my own pedicure so i take a minute to soak my feet for about 20 minutes in hot water with epsom salt some baby johnson and johnson and some essential oils if i have it um i also love to add peppermint castile soap to that then i go in and i push down my cuticles and i clean up the dead skin around my toenails the toenail problem that i had is like almost all the way gone away like i'm so thankful y'all <laughs> i kind of want to put in a picture of what my toenails look like before but also i kind of don't i literally just got comfortable with showing my feet like in 2022 um i've had this toenail problem since like elementary school or middle school and it made my toenails super thick and discolored and i've tried pills creams all of that but i finally started to use this nail solution in combination with just making sure that my feet are always dry i always wear socks with my shoes i spray my shoes after the fact and then my mom also got me these like fungal pills which i feel like was the icing on the cake and really really helped that issue be gone but since then i basically don't trust normal nail shops <laughs> i would go back to the specialty place um and i still might do that but yeah normal nail shops i just be looking at like how they sanitize stuff and i'm like mm, 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 mm. so i go in with my e-file right here and i take this little like needle tool and i use that to clean up my sidewalls clean up the corner of the nail and clean up that cuticle as well then i go in with this buffer type tool and i use that to smooth out the surface of my nail and really make sure that everything is just even it's gotten so much better now but before because of my nail issue my toenails were super duper thick and they would have like ridges in them and this little tool just helps to smooth everything out and file it on down if you have thick toenails i suggest using the like sanding bit the one that's coarser and can move through thick toenail skin easier but i always take it super slow with this because you don't want to like file down your toenails too 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 much filing your toenails too much even if they are thick can actually hurt them more than it can benefit you because you cannot file away too much of that top layer After I do my filing, then I go in with my toenail clipper, or you can use like the ones that low key look like pliers. <laughs> I like those better, especially if you have thicker toenails, because it really, really gets you able to get in there and get a good straight across cut. After I cut my toenails, I use the file to make them as square as I want them to be, and also to get underneath the corner of that nail because we do not want any ingrown toenails. Okay, okay. And as y'all can see on my big toe, this is on my right foot it's still um a little bit thick like you can see that underneath my nail bed it's not completely close to my skin yet but y'all never would have made it okay if y'all would have saw where i came from this is so much progress for your girl i'm so happy Thank you. 
then I go in with this little like scoopy tool and this allows you to go in and get all of that dead skin and keratin from underneath and around your toenails and I feel like this is super beneficial and good if you do have any of that buildup underneath your toes and to just do in general like if you wear socks that are super linty and stuff this is also perfect for you. After that, I take my foot file and y'all need to throw them cheese grater files away, okay? Throw those cheese grater files away and get you a foot file that is like this or one of those glass ones. This has a coarse side and a fine side and I do this on dry feet and y'all can see it is looking like a snow globe, okay? <laughs> but I love these foot files. They work really, really well. Those cheese grater type foot files, one, can damage your skin. Um, they're really just like almost shaving the skin off of your feet and if you're not careful with those you can really do some harm to yourself on top of low-key being hard to sanitize whereas these type of foot files this one specifically comes with like multiple um filers so after each pedicure maybe one or two pedicures you can actually take off the rough part and then replace it with a new one This is what my toesies look like after I added my new gel polish and some cuticle oil. I'm like, okay, I am at the salon. Then I grab these press-on nails. I've been doing my pre some press-ons like the past couple times I got my nails done because boy those nail trips truly honestly truly 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 add up um whether you're getting normal acrylic or gel x like i feel like i cannot leave the nail shop without spending at least 70 dollars. and listen the way prices are going up on everything right now I ain't got it in me. So I just start by roughening up the inside of each nail that I chose after matching it to my normal nail. Then my cuticles back on each finger just with a little stick that they gave me. That's one thing that I also try not to do. I try not to use the same bits on my nails as I use on my toesies. This is what my hands look like after I glue the nails on. Then I go ahead and file it because I want that square shape. I've been, I'm a, I might be a square naily girl right now. Now, I'm not sure. Usually I do almond, but I've been rocking with the square lately. This is what my nails use look like after my gel and oil application. This is my first time doing gel nails on myself, but I was pretty satisfied. Then I went ahead and did my mouth care. This is an important self-care step i also went ahead with my five minutes whitening gel people are like how you get your teeth so white i don't feel like my teeth are that white but i love this whitening gel it's low-key cheap and i just put it into my invisalign trays then i pop that into my mouth to spit out the excess and let that sit in for 20 or 30 minutes towards the end of that timer i did this versed face mask i've been loving this it's not super expensive you put it all on your face let it sit for a couple minutes and then you rinse it off with lukewarm water i do feel like it works well at smoothing texture out and it's strong enough that you could use it multiple days a week This is what I'm looking like after. I'm like, okay, come on skin, let's get into it, let's get into it. I need my lashes done, okay, y'all ignore that, ignore that. <laughs> then i was like it is time to relax i started to light my candles just to set the mood and get that energy right because i wanted to have a very relaxing night and speaking of relaxing thank you to vita optima for gifting me these elevate premium delta 8 thc gummies these are actually vegan gummies i like to use cbd to calm down if i'm feeling anxious or simply to get a good night's rest and relax and y'all i feel like people 
people usually are like, I don't feel CBD. CBD don't do nothing. Let me tell you about these gummies, okay? You can take one to four throughout the day um, if like as needed, but one will honestly get you right, like all the way right. After I took my gummy, I sat down for some meditation and some yoga just to feel centered again. I've been super busy with work, honestly both jobs <laughs> been taking me through it a little bit and I haven't really been taking time to center myself or do things that I love. So I did this little yoga flow that I honestly stole from the yoga class that I went to. I enjoyed it a lot and it was super simple and I was like, I can do some of these moves at home. So as I'm sitting down, I start to just rotate forward and this feels so good on your lower back, y'all. Like, I can't even explain it. I sit in a chair all day when I'm working from home. I sit in a chair or on the couch or on my bed and my lower back holds a lot of tension. So I honestly love to do this yoga exercise now just to start to loosen up everything. My little sister joined me for a bit. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then she's like, I'm going to do it too. And she looked like my shadow. And we were just doing circles together. <laughs> Then I go in and do some stretches, again, focusing on my lower back. I stand up and have my hands on my bed and I start to stretch my hamstrings out. This is a really good exercise to do. Try not to lift your heels off of your mat or off the ground and you will feel that stretch so much in your hamstrings and in your calves. This honestly feels so, so good. It's often an area that I neglect when I'm stretching after the gym or just in general, so it's really good to incorporate incorporate this into my routine. I did some child's pose and some cat cow. Cat cow is one of my favorite yoga poses also. Again, targeting that lower back. Anything that loosens up my lower back for me, whether it's shaking a tail feather, doing some cat cow, doing some rotations, I'm honestly 100% with it. To end the night, I did a super quick yoni steam. Yoning steaming has benefits simply from relaxation to fighting off infection, adding moisture, fertility, if you're into that or if you need that. <laughs> but I simply use it as a mini spa treatment and to relax, I add my herbs to some boiling water with a hot bowl and I just kneel over it and hang out and read or eat a snack or listen to some music while I vibe and get all of those benefits. I ended the night in bed reading, but I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I will catch you on the next one. Peace out.